good morning student in the first video we had seen the steps of digestion in different animals now in this video we will see the human digestive system how these five steps of digestion takes place in the human body now this nutrition or this steps of nutrition in the human body takes place inside a long tube coiled in some places that is called gut or alimentary canal alimentary canal or we can say it gastrointestinal tract gi tract in some places it is also called gi tract now this alimentary canal consists of different organs that constitute the digestive system they are mouth esophagus or food pipe you can say food pipe then your stomach small intestine large intestine then your rectum ending with anus so all these are all these constitute the alimentary canal along these organs uh some glands solid part of these are the hollow structure of the alimentary canal now some solid structures or solid organs that are glands salivary glands then your salivary gland then second is your liver pancreas so these are uh, uh, all these secrete the digestive juices that help to convert the complex substance of the food into simple soluble substance now these di digestive juices are also secreted by the inner wall of stomach and in small intestine now one by one we will see how the digestion how, how these all the five steps of nutrition takes place in the human body first is your mouth so mouth so as food is taken in the mouth means ingest ingestion process takes place through the mouth so our digestion begins inside our mouth when we start chewing the food and that takes place with the help of our teeth have you think whenever we think about any delicious food our mouth is full of water what is that water do you know that is saliva that is saliva that is secreted by the three pairs of salivary gland so as soon as we take food in our mouth our digestion starts with the help of uh, chewing the food and with the help of saliva saliva is a digestive juice secreted by three pairs of salivary gland so this saliva is a digestive juice which is secreted by three pairs of salivary gland which are present in our mouth 
so these three pairs of salivary gland are first is your parotid parotid gland second is your sublingual and submandibular so these three pairs of salivary gland are present in our uh, inside our mouth near the neck and here near the lower jaw two pairs near the lower jaw and below the neck now these three pairs secrete the salivary uh, secretes the saliva in our mouth now with the help of teeth our food is break down into simple soluble form by the and this process is called mastication mastication process mastication so mastication process is what breaking down of food with the help of teeth into simple soluble form into smaller uh, by smaller parts that is called mastication so now we have four different type of teeth what are that teeth i think everyone knows four different type of teeth are teeth they are the bony structure and they are hard four types incisor canine premolars and molars so these are the four type of teeth present now this what are the functions incisor incisor functions cutting and biting so incisor these are for the cutting and biting food and they are broad and have sharp edges chisel shaped they are of chisel shaped and what are the numbers they are four incisor in each jaw we have two jaw upper jaw lower jaw so in each jaw four incisors are present now canines they are pointed teeth they are uh, uh, canines they are pointed teeth used for tearing of food and they are two in number tearing flesh and these canines are well developed in the carnivores and these incisors are well developed in the herbivores premolars now these premolars they are for grinding the food premolars are for grinding grinding the food and both the premolars and molars both have the same function grinding and crushing the food only difference is that uh, molars are little bit larger than premolars and last pair of molars are known as wisdom teeth how many uh, teeth we have 32 in number but have you counted we don't have 32 uh, teeth last pair that comes four teeth normally we have 28 teeth four teeth that comes up after the age of 20 they are called wisdom teeth it's not necessary that all the four teeth came maybe uh, sometime two teeth or sometime one or maybe it will not come that are called wisdom teeth and they are uh, of no, not very much use <clears throat> so 
premolars and molars. Uh, their numbers are four premolars. Although both have crushing, crushing and grinding. And premolars, four in numbers in each jaw and six. So in each jaw we have 16, 16 teeth. We have one dental formula. For half jaw. Dental formula that is incisor, canine, premolar, molar. Two, one, two, three. Two, one, two, three by two, one, two, three. That is for half jaw. Half jaw. Two, one, two, three. Two, one, two, three. You can multiply it with 2, then we will get 4, 2, 4, 6 by 4, 2, 4, 6. So this is 16, 16, 32. So this is the dental formula of teeth. Now the white substance that cover our teeth that is called the enamel. And this is the hardest substance in the body. Enamel is the hardest substance in our body. Now, once again, we have to see what are the function of saliva. That saliva, what, what, uh, what is the function of that saliva? So, saliva that helps to break down the food, saliva, first function, it helps to break down food into, uh, food into, um, into simple soluble form. Means whatever starch is present in, <clears throat> in our food that has to be broken into simple sugar. And it also makes the food easier to swallow by making it wet and slippery. So saliva now helps us with our food. Easy to easy to swallow. Oh. Now this saliva contains an enzyme that converts uh, uh, that converts the starch into uh, sugar. That is called salivary amylase. Salivary amylase or tylene. Salivary amylase or tylene. That salivary amylase converts the uh, starch into simple sugar. That is easy to digest. <coughs> Now this teeth, now this teeth, they are of two types. Parman, in the human, uh, a child has 20 teeth, means uh, two types of teeth, Parman, uh, temporary teeth and permanent teeth. A child has 20 teeth, that is 10 in each row and they are known as milk teeth or temporary teeth. They fall off by the age of uh, 10 and are replaced by large permanent teeth. Now, 
Next structure is your inside our mouth we have tongue. So what is the function of tongue? So this tongue is a flat muscular organ attached to the back from the floor of the buccal cavity. This mouth is also called buccal cavity. Buccal cavity. And what are they? It's very important. Without, can you imagine? Without tongue, uh, what will happen? We can't speak. We can't digest. So it helps to mix saliva with the food. It helps to taste the food. And it helps to swallow and it helps to speak. So these are the function of tongue. Now, tongue contain different taste birds that are of four types. That is bitter, sour, salt, salty and sweet. Previously, scientists thought that they have different reasons. <coughs> On a tongue, they, they are, there are different reasons of these four taste birds. But after that, it was proved that no, they all are scattered throughout the tongue. Means all are mixed. There is no particular reason. <coughs> <clears throat> so, so inside our mouth we have seen different types of teeth, different types of uh, three prayers of salivary gland, two types of uh, two two uh, types of teeth that is permanent teeth and uh, temporary teeth. Uh, now, next after <clears throat> food that is. Now the food has to be swallowed. Now the food has chewed, food, food has masticated. Now that food has to be chewed and it has to be swallowed. So as the food is swallowed, it slides down through the pharynx into the food pipe that is called esophagus. And this esophagus, through the esophagus, food goes into the stomach. Now, the question is how the food passes through the stomach. <coughs> now, <coughs> now this esophagus is about 25 centimeter long tube but here no die in esophagus no digestion takes place the muscles of the esophagus contract one after the another in a wave like motion and this wave like motion of the muscles pushes the food uh, along the body and that process is called peristalsis Paris. So all these uh, uh, all these organs, hollow organs are made up of muscles. So the food uh, moves with the contraction and relaxation of muscles and that is called peristalsis. Peristalsis. So what is peristalsis? The wave-like muscular movement. The wave-like muscular the wave like muscular movement which starts from which starts from esophagus and continue continues through throughout the elementary canal to push the food forward is called 
पेरिस टल सिस सो दिस इज थ्रू पेरिस्टाइसिस प्रोसेस द मूड द फूड मूव्स फ्रॉम इसोफेगस टू स्टमक Now stomach lies in the abdomen and it is a G-shaped structure, sac-like structure. It is about thirty centimeter long, with a muscular wall. It secretes gastric juices, which help in digestion. And now, this stomach can hold two liters of food at a time, and food stay in the stomach. from a few minute to few hours depending on the type of food we had eaten and the inner lining of stomach <coughs> secretes mucus mucus hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid and digestive juices now what is this mucus so th this is mucus is a jelly like substance that protects the inner wall of the uh, stomach this mucus protects the inner lining of the stomach and the function of acid now you will be wonder that this acid hydrochloric acid this is a dilute acid but it is strong enough to melt a iron bar so the question is if this acid is so strong why it doesn't dissolve the stomach because of the presence of mucus that mucus protect uh, layer of mucus is present on the inner wall of the uh, stomach that prevents of being dissolved by the hcl so what are the function of this acid this acid kills bacteria that enter along with the food and help in the digestion of protein the stomach muscles that squeezes is contract and mixed with the food uh, and the digestive juices the digestive juices they break down the protein into simple substance and thus food is partially digested in the stomach and that is called chyme so when the food is in the mouth and it is mixed with the uh, sal saliva at that time <clears throat> that is called bolus and when food is mixed with the digestive juices in the stomach that is called chyme stomach and mouth bolus <clears throat> now this gastric juice contain two enzymes now the uh, you might have questions what are enzymes enzymes kya hota hai so enzyme is a biological proteinous substance that that breaks the food into simpler substance so two gastric ju uh, juices has two enzyme that is pepsin and renin gastric pepsin and renin so these are two enzymes present in the gastric juices uh, juices now functions pepsin can changes protein into <coughs> protein into peptone to so, pepsin kya karta hai protein ko peptone mein change karta hai badal deta hai एंड हाइड्रोक्लोरिक एसिड का फंक्शन तो आपको पता है किल द बैक्टीरिया दैट इंटर्स अलॉन्ग विद द फूड नाउ रेनिंग चेंज मिल्क प्रोटीन दैट इज केसिन इन टू इंसोलेबल कर्ड 
तो रेनिन चेंज कर देता है मिल्क प्रोटीन मिल्क प्रोटीन कौन सा है केसिन इन टू इंसॉलेबल कर्ट और म्यूकस का फंक्शन आपको पता है म्यूकस प्रोटेक्ट्स द इनर लाइनिंग ऑफ द स्टमक फ्रॉम द एक्शन ऑफ एसिड अंडर नॉर्मल कंडीशन दैट आई हैव टोल्ड यू अर्लियर एंड इन द स्टमक फूड स्टेज अबाउट फोर थ्री टू फोर आवर्स आफ्टर दैट इट मूव्स टू द स्मॉल इंटेस्टाइन and in the small intestine last step of digestion uh, takes place so small intestine it is a long coiled tube uh, in which stomach opens the upper part of the intestine is called duodenum it receives the bile juice from the liver and pancreatic juice from the pancreas now this small intestine has three parts three parts duodenum duodenum and ileum so small intestines is made up of three parts duodenum duodenum and ileum and this small intestine is about 7 meter long 7 meter long now this bile juice does not contain any digestive enzyme but it helps in the digestion of fat by emulsifying them means breaking them into tiny droplets to provide large surface area for the enzyme to act means it also neutralizes the acidity of the food and make it alkaline for the action of pancreatic juices now the muscles in the small intestine mixes with food with more digestive juices some juices are secreted by the cells of the small intestine itself other comes from liver which is liver which is the largest gland in the body and pancreas that is located just below the stomach liver now liver secretes bile juice which is stored in the gall bladder so liver secretes bile juice which is stored in the gall bladder and then this bile breaks up the fat into tiny uh, droplets that can digest and absorb more easily after that the digestive juices then act on these tiny droplets to form simpler compounds known as fatty acid and glycerol now here the pancre pancreas also secreted the pancreatic juices that changes starch into simple sugar and protein into simpler compounds that is called amino acids now here small intestine three enzymes are present in the pancreatic juices that are amylase trypsin and lipase so amylase lipase and trypsin tripsy now see how these three um, enzymes act on which nutrients now this trypsin changes protein into peptones lipase acts on fats and changes them into fatty acid and glycerol and amylase convert the leftover starch into maltose means in small intestine there are complete digestion of carbohydrate fat and protein so this amylase works on starch and change into maltose 
this lipase acts on fat and change it to fatty acid and glycerol and trypsin or protein and change into peptones. So the, here is the complete digestion of all the three nutrients. So the partially digested food containing partially digested carbohydrate, protein and emulsified fat now enter the uh, last part of small intestine that is ileum. Now the wall of the ileum secretes the intestinal, intestinal juice called succus entericus. Succus entericus. <clears throat> This is intestinal juice. So here the food is again acted upon by the trypsin maltase, sucrase and lactase. Now again trypsin change into peptone and peptides into simplest form that is amino acid. Maltase change uh, into maltose into glucose simplest form and sucrase change into sucrose into glucose and fructose and lactase changes into lactose into glucose and galactose. So all the nutrients are, uh, are completely converted into its simplest form. So the digestion of protein, fat and carbohydrate is completed in the small intestine. Now this small intestine not only digest food but also absorb food. And the inner surface of small intestine that is called ileum, they have a small, they have a million thousands of finger like projection that is called villi which increase the surface area of the intestine. Now this villi contains blood vessels and the digested food passes through the thin wall of, the, of these blood vessels and enter the blood stream. Now so this process is called absorption. Now the food is absorbed. After that, it absorbed food means of the absorbed nutrients uh, is passes uh, in the large intestine. After that, the assimilation process means the absorbed food is passes into the blood and the different part of the body. Then it is used for providing energy. And, and materials for growth and repair of the body tissues. So they, here this is the final stage in the process of digestion and is known as assimilation. Means glucose is broken down into cells with the help of oxygen into carbon dioxide and water to provide energy. Amino acids are used for building and repairing of body parts and fatty acid and glycerols are stored under skin act as a energy reserves. <coughs> and the last step that is your ejection and this takes place through large intestine. Now this large intestine also has three parts that is Cecum, colon and rectum. Cecum, colon and 
rectum. So these these are the three parts of large intestine. So the undigested whatever food we are eating that all are not digested uh, uh, completely. The food that can't be digested move from the small intestine to the to a wide tube called the large intestine. It is about 1.5 meter long and here the most part of the food most of the water present in the food is absorbed and the undigested food that is passed through the uh, that is stored in the rectum and finally it passes out of the body through the anus. So this is all about your human digestive system. Now, so uh, we have seen the human digestive system. One more topic we have to see uh, is this uh, digestion takes same in the herbivores? No, there is little bit difference in their stomach. And they are, they are called ruminants. Ruminants means they are the hoofed plant eating animals that digest their food in two steps. Means all the herbivores like cow, buffalo, goat, sheep, all these are herbivores. They have a complicated stomach consisting of four chambers. Up, we have only one chambered stomach. Now this... <clears throat> ruminants they have four chambered stomach so all the <clears throat> plant cells they consist of a complex substance that is called cellulose so all plants have uh, a complex um, carbohydrate that is called cellulose now this cellulose and the plants eat that cellulose so digestion of cellulose requires a special type of digestive system in which stomach is divided into four chambers. Now what are those four chambers? That is, so ruminants. So ruminants, four chambered stomach. First is your rumen, second is your reticulum, reticulum, third is your omesum, and fourth is your abomasum. So these are the four chambered stomach now in the ruminants means grass eating animals food is first swallowed in uh, it goes into the first chamber that is called rumen here it is partially digested and is called curd so jaise hi food unke first chamber mein pahunchta hai wo partially digest hota hai and it is called curd you have seen all the uh, herbivores, they are just grazing. They are sitting and grazing. Why? Because they are not eating the food. They are just swallowing the food. First, they swallowed as much as possible. They swallowed the food and that, that swallowed food is stored in the rumen. And after partially digested, it goes into the second chamber that is reticulum where and where from the second chamber it is returned to the mouth for thorough chewing that is process is called rumination grazing graze jo karte rehte hain baith ke that is uh, rumination isliye unko ruminants bola jata hai after chewing the food is swallowed for a second time and then die digested further in the remaining chambers 
it is finally sent to the small intestine where the absorption of nutrients and rest of the uh, steps are similar as as the humans jaise hum log mein hota hai waise un log mein bhi hota hai only difference is the four chambered stomach uh, how the food is uh, again back into the mouth and they just chew the food and then swallow again we we humans we can't digest cellulose because for absorb for digesting cellulose a special type of bacteria is present in their uh, stomach that is not present in our stomach <clears throat> so this is all about human digestive system in the next video we will discuss question answer till then stay safe stay home bye